that sound. That's going to get us right into week one or week two, however you want to chalk it up of the preseason. If you're going to just call the I Hall of Fame game week one. Yeah, it's week zero. This is week one. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to start with the Panthers Bills tonight. And the first thing off the rip is you see that nice screen to CMC. So smoky, smoky, so silky smooth. He is as smoky as it gets. He's very smoky. <laughs> silky smooth through traffic. Soft hands, great vision, strong feet. He looked untackleable. He looked, he looked phenomenal. He looked great. He looked fantastic. He that's, looked like Christian McCaffrey. That's what I'm saying. Coming to life. I mean, not just in the passing game, but he was grinding it out. He was cutting him up. Had a nice run or two. Passing game is where he's going to flourish. First and goal on the two-yard line. Oh, my God. He got a goal line carry. Oh, oh no. The whole world comes to an end. It's, it's Christian McCaffrey time now. He got one goal line carry, converted it, and it, he's just been anointed. He's the it's new. It's the preseason. He's Cam Newton slid. He's a new RB1 overall. It's Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I just, if this is the regular season. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is going to get some goal line carries. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. One, this Panthers line is slowly but surely kind of getting decimated as we go through. They already lost their best player to free agency, and now they've had a couple of big injuries on that line. And then two, if this is the regular season, there's a decent chance that Cam Newton's going to try to run that in from the goal line as well. Probably. He they slid. Do have, he slid. He slid because it's the preseason. The, the most mobile quarterback under center, so that's going to take away from some of the run deficiencies, the offensive line deficiencies for the running back, who in this instance was Christian McCaffrey. And I guess just to go, I mean, we are, we were completely on record with setting the, our narrative against the public's like value of Christian McCaffrey a couple months back when we did that podcast about Christian McCaffrey and just saying, hey, pump the brakes on wh where you guys are putting him. And obviously if he's going to go out there and the coaches are talking about getting him 20 carries a game, 20 touches a game, he was a back end RB1 last year. And we're not saying that he can't be that again this year it's just what we brought up before was the lack of targets that were last year and everything that's coming into this year like a touch so plenty of targets no lack of targets last year for the for the panthers like, like lack as of, a whole as wide a receiver, right right you know with greg olson being hurt and wide receivers not you know you bring in the you got dt Moore, DJ Moore and greg olson's you know healthy and all that good stuff and, and you, you know got, it's just you got another short area kind of target efficient targets for cam newton which they're trying to get which is part of the reason christian mccaffrey's there and curtis samuel are there you get them shorter easier targets get that completion percentage up yeah where you want to see and pro quarterbacks completion percentage theoretically out of and this, then you have a bigger bodied guy and a tight end the to ball kind of coming fill in out the rest of that the ball coming out faster might take you know a little put a little less wear so, and tear on cam as we go forward really what what the to be clear about what we were saying it's, it's never about it was never about the talent of christian mccaffrey the player in christian mccaffrey like we all love christian mccaffrey it was just about that there was bell cow running backs going in behind him he was being drafted in front of guys who you were knew were going to get 20 carries a melvin game, gordon and you knew we're going to get 50 at least 50 targets a season or 50 catches a season probably 70 or 80 targets per season right and you're going to see that you know we were basically arguing him or melvin gordon at, at that particular time because the the adp was flipped from where it is now mm -hmm. um and just kind of telling you that you should be taking these more bell cowish backs and that there is a decent chance that yes christian mccaffrey came in and saw a ton of targets and i don't you know cj anderson came in and there's a lot of things going on in this offense that just oh, suggests a third running back on this yeah field. i don't i don't give a shit what cj anderson came in if cj like most likely unless they didn't want to change personnel and were trying to get back up to that line quickly and that goal line situation cj anderson probably would have checked into that ball game well it's it's we're speculating but right. I, I, I don't it's, it's not about a, a hatred for C.J. Anderson by any means. No. It was more just about the the Christian target. The, yeah, the Christian McCaffrey. It's more about the targets and that you have a D.J. Moore now coming in who looked good in this first preseason action, first live game action. You have a Curtis Samuel who missed time last year who can do things like a Christian McCaffrey. You bring in another running back who was like a Jay Stu last year who's at this point in his career better than a Jay Stu. Exactly. Greg Olson missed a chunk of time last year. A favorite target. You know, you don't probably not get like I think where um, Funches was last year is probably about where he'll be again this year. So yeah. like just it was just a, a 
there's a lot of things changing for Christian McCaffrey, and the reason that he was up in that RB1 category was because of the amount of targets that he got. And we really didn't even hit on there was, you know, midseason, right before the trade deadline, you lose Kelvin Benjamin. Right. So he goes away, and midseason, you all of a sudden, the coaches have to deal with what your number one target walked away. Obviously, Olsen's probably your, as much of a number one target as you have on the team. He's hurt, and then Kelvin Benjamin gets traded. So you're backfilling those targets on a week-to-week basis on a moment's notice. And then, you know, again, we're not saying that Christian McCaffrey is not going to get plenty of work this year. It's just like we're – there's no reason to take Christian McCaffrey over Melvin Gordon, and I'm in a I'm in a, a fair a big money startup right now, and Melvin Gordon gets taken ahead of Christian McCaffrey when the money's on the line. That's all what we're saying, and a lot of people, and I can't blame you. Like I love Christian McCaffrey, me and too, and, and that's it, not what the point of that more, conversation was. When I look at or my is team, I have I probably would prefer to see Christian McCaffrey on my team for the next eight years, quote unquote, over a Melvin Gordon, but the next two or three years to try to win some money, give me Melvin Gordon every time. Right. And that's the end end result is when you're trying to win money. Yes. What you know, Christian McCaffrey's great and he's there's a there's a built in PPR floor that's nice, but it's you're missing those bell cow kind of games that yes. you get out of these other players is basically kind of what we were saying in that uh discussion. I'm I'm still down to take McCaff or or I'm still down to take Melvin Gordon over McCaffrey, but Man, he added six pounds of muscle, and he looked awesome. I mean, he looked just – he, hey, he looked better than he did last year. He, look, he mean, looked exactly like he always has looked to me. This is what, that's what he looks like. There's no difference. Nothing changed with Christian McCaffrey. He's still good. I mean, he was he only, always good. He only averaged 3.7 yards per carry last year. He wasn't busting off very many big runs. It was the passing game. Right. Work, but this, this is still probably going to be the – little bit of slight which is why we're telling you to take these other guys because there isn't going to be a ton of vo- rushing volume for this guy that's all it is it's the rushing volume and if what what casey and i put together three months ago or two and a half months ago for you if the coaches are pr- pushing and pushing the, saying something that we you know like the Dallas Cowboys said, hey, we just brought in Tavon Austin. We're going to give him 24 carries, cut touches a game. And everybody, the world laughed at it. The first time the Panthers said, we're going to get 20 to 30 touches a game for the Christian McCaffrey, the world laughed at it. The second time they said, we're going to try to get him 25 touches a game. Everybody laughs, but they're like, all right, well, they're telling us this again and again. It's like, well. It's just what, really not possible for them to give him 25 ca- Touches, touches a game. game. I mean, it's possible because I mean, for, other and nobody else is going to touch it. It's possible, but it's not the best case scenario for the team. That's what I'm saying. It's like, not the best case scenario for your young running back to be out there. You know, it's not like he's a 225 pound workhorse. And and you know, Shady McCoys do happen, and Devonte Freeman does. It's not quite as heavy as I thought he was, and you know, it can happen at 206 pounds. It can, but it's you just would rather not necessarily force it on him. I mean, him. Like, Dalvin Cook's not that big. Kareem Hunt's not that big. Like, none of these – like, I'm not worried. It's not about the weight for me. It's just 208. A, it's about the usage for me and, and how they're, yeah. and how they're using him and going to use him. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm still I'm still down to take Melvin, but, damn, I feel real good about my McCaffrey. I got I mean, you feel better about McCaffrey than you did than you did two months ago. There's no doubt about well, that's it. That's the whole it's, thing. It's like there's no reason to feel bad about your McCaffrey shares. That wasn't the point of what we were saying. The point of it was, was that the market needed to adjust yeah, from they where had, it was to where it is, and it, and it has. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs>